This is the first sunny day in about two weeks and I am going to try to water my orchids today and talk about how to grow orchids in a very cold environment. So I'm located uh, in Chicago, which is in the northern part of the United States in the Midwest. And it's currently about 20 degrees outside. And if looking at the rooftops of my neighbors, you can see that it's been snowing. And so I have a very nice grow space uh, with windows in it, but it gets really cold in here and my orchids tend to suffer in certain ways as a result of it being colder. As I said before, the sun hasn't been out for almost a week. So this is the first um, sunny day that we've had in uh, almost two weeks. And as a result, uh, I have not been watering my orchids. I've been running a humidifier. So here's a warmest humidifier in my grow space and this keeps the humidity up in my grow area, but I haven't been watering because if you water and it's really cold, then uh, orchids tend to be very susceptible to rot, uh, to fungal infections and to rot, and it's really easy to lose uh, plants. I'm running two reptile foggers in my grow area and trying to use them to keep things moist without having to water. They turn on every two hours for about 30 minutes each and they don't fog at night. I have my thermostat set so it gets down to about 55 in my grow area at night but one of the effects of it being really cold in here is that, look at these flowers that have just opened. See how um, scrunched up they are. This happens a lot. Cattleyas in particular will open up more widely when they have more water. So they, they, uh, they have bigger flowers when they have more water and um, they tend to basically open up more. So the fact this might be genetics, but it might also, the fact that these leaves are just curled up on themselves like this is a fe um, effect of it being cold in here and my lack of watering since. But like, so like this one, you can see the leaves are not um, curling up on them. So the petals aren't curling up on themselves, but the flowers aren't very open. Uh, you might also see like if there's not a lot of light, um, these, these two orchids are still getting a lot of light, but um, the f colors are not as intense when there's not enough light. So they're getting enough light. I have nice intense colors on my flowers, but the flowers are all sort of cupped and scrunched up. You can see that here on this uh, goldfinch. You can see this here, this is a Jalapa crossed to Richard Mueller. It's also all scrunched up. And these are all flowers that have formed and opened since uh, bringing them inside and it's been kind of cold. So you can see here some forming flower buds right here and see how they're just all sort of scrunched up in among themselves because, uh, well, I have also been busy, but it has just simply been too uh, chilly to water more frequently because I didn't want to lose stuff to rot. So here's a bifoliate cattleya and you can see its flowers. So this really could be much flatter and wider, but you can see the flowers are, the petals are curved and this is most likely due to the lack of water and heat. On the other hand, uh, Oncidium Alliance hybrids like it a little bit cooler than they normally get in my grow area. So I have them in the same room as I do my Cattleyas. It tends to be really warm, but um, most of the Oncidium Alliance wants to be cooler than Cattleyas. And you can see um, right here, I have, I have this, um, let's see what it is. It's um, 
Crimson Pride the, from Mona Kia Orchids in Hawaii. And I have an Oncidium, um, what was it, like Pinky? Uh, eye Candy Pinky, sorry. It's, uh, the, the blooms are fading on this. It's been open for a few weeks. But you can see that it's like Oncidium season. Shari Baby up here. And uh, these like it cooler. So I tend to get a lot of blooms in the winter on my Oncidium Alliance hybrid uh, plants. They start spiking in the fall when it gets a little cooler and then um, I put them in my grow area where it's uh, semi-shaded. So there's the roof right there. So these guys are in the shade. They get bright indirect sunlight and they really like it. Um, they don't do as well in the summer for me. It's a little bit too hot and in the summer when they bloom, when it's really hot like that, uh, flowers that are big and flat and wide like this in the winter tend to have their leaves curl up. Not all my Oncidiums can fit on a top shelf, and so I have all my Twinkle and Twinkle adjacent varieties, like this Cheriform, which is a parent of Twinkle, um, under this uh, middle shelf. So I have Richard Mueller's on top of it, and then I have these twinkles that have been spiking since I brought them in and they're almost ready to open. I believe this is gold dust and there is a suke marguerite in here as well. Um, but again, they want bright indirect light. So I have them um, under other orchids so it's not quite so bright for them. And then you can see this uh, I think this is Francine right here open and I had it open in the summer and the lips were really curled back and that's what I'm saying about it. They bloom better when it's cooler. So if you remember the orchids that I got from Katia Orchidias that I was babysitting for the iOS, um, not all of them are making it. Like here's this. So this, these are um, Dikea, Dikea. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, there are three different ones uh, that I was babysitting and you can just see that uh, they were very sad uh, when I got them to start watching them. But now you can see that lots of it's dead um, and probably they'll be compost soon. Um, I don't really actually know how to grow it. I tried growing them sort of like in a little cup and they decayed and then I brought them uh, the, where I was keeping them in a cool area was just too cold. So I brought them um, into my grow space and they're still not very happy. Um, and then, oh, let's see, is this gonna make it or am I gonna lose the top on this? Um, this is an Ionopsis. Um, let's see, Ionopsis. Oh no, the tag's down at the bottom. Ionopsis uh, utricoloides, and it's spiking. It's happy, but I put the uh, these next, these Dakia next to it, and they're just, they're not long for this world. Um, here's another, this is a Lockhardia that's from Katia had some flowers on it, but you can see like this whole stem has died. Uh, I have also a tray full of them and most of the tray seems to be doing all right. And hopefully they'll make it to the Illinois Orchid Society February auction. Um, but some are not like, I'm gonna have to put this one in the compost. It's obviously not making it. But you know, some, some did, so you can see the difference between alive and dead. Those are pleurothalids. So, you know, the cold, I mean, these were cool growers, but I think these were just already, some of them just weren't doing so great and they not recovering. Um, the ones that are recovering, like, like these restrepias down here, they look pretty good, but, uh, you know, I don't obviously know all the conditions for these. I'm just trying to keep them alive until February for the iOS to sell them. So even my mounted orchids, I haven't been watering while it's been overcast. 
and cold. I think it only gets up to 65 or so without the sun in here, but with the sun in here, it can get up to 90 degrees um, when the days are longer. Today, right now in here, it's only about 70 degrees. This is what it looks like when something gets rot because it's too cold and wet. Um, this is a Viton Vanda Brighton Jade Hawaii that I took out of flask um, two years ago. And after two years of growth, I've now lost it. Uh, so in general, I, do, I try very hard um, not to water when it's too cold. Um, it's made easier right now because I'm very busy with work and I just don't have time to water. So and I shouldn't. So two things that go together well. I've had a little trouble with my catacetums this year. Um, so this is a Fred Clark car after dark and I brought it in and it started to spike and then the spikes grew into the inside of the pot and I lifted them out. And when I did that, the end of the spike died. Um, so, and these are also a little drier than I'd like. These could be a lot more uh, open and floriferous, uh, but I think it's compensating by putting out another spike. It also has a spike on the other side of the pot, which also got trapped and you can see that um, it's a little dry. And this plant is still got all its leaves, so I should still be watering it fully um, while it's blooming, but uh, it's getting the same watering schedule as everything else since the sun hasn't been out and it's been cooler. So um, it's suffering a little bit. Uh, the flowering could be much better if I was watering it more, but again, I don't want it to rot because it's so cold. My nobly type dendrobiums, the, the hybrids, do like this regime of less water and cool, so they are starting to bud. I have a basin of them right here, and you can see buds starting to form everywhere. Um, winter is usually a big dendrobium blooming time. Uh, my kingy anum types are also spiking and blooming. So my kingy anum types, I do not, uh, I don't like do a winter rest. I don't dry them off, but again, I am not watering them when uh, we don't have sun and it's too cold. Uh, so they do have a reduced amount of watering going on right now. So I want to emphasize that the cool winter is both good and bad. There are orchids that like it, and then there are orchids that uh, want to bloom at this time of year, uh, like my catalayas. A lot of lavender catalayas bloom at this time of year, but uh, the blooms probably aren't quite as good if, as if like I lived in Florida. It is harder to grow Catalea as well uh, in Chicago. And I think that's it for uh, this growing update.